Hey there guys, this is Pharaoh2091, and welcome back to Let's Play Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Last time we left off, we were once again questioning witnesses we have, such as Grey Earl, Amir, and, well, now even the Mailer, Letty Mailer. And we listened to her testimony regarding, you know, she was looking for Sir Belluk's letter that we just happened to have, and she claims that it had a lot of writing on it, so now it's time to cross-examine her testimony. Not really sure if there's anything I can contradict uh, anything on, or, you know, present evidence on. Probably around 1 a.m., I made delivery to Sir Belty. And now it's the same time that... Grey Earl said that she went to bed. Actually, yeah, that was the same time she went to bed. Uh, I was writing a letter at time, I'll be ready as soon as I can, pick it up tomorrow morning. Let's just study this. Okay, what about right here? You wish about her a good night, but... Didn't Grey Earl say that she already went to bed? I think. Wait a minute! When you say the butler, you mean... Um, Mr... Um, I mean, Miss Grayerl, of course. She was in a quarter carrying a tray. Now nah, that's a lie. Hang on! Miss Grayerl, I'd like to ask you something. Oh, certainly. What is it? You stated previously that you would excuse yourself and left Sir Belduc's study shortly after 1 a.m. Yes, that is correct. However, according to Miss Mailer's testimony, the two of you came across each other while you were waiting outside that room. Why didn't you mention that until now? That... that's because... I apologize. I'm afraid I completely forgot to mention it. Oh, so you weren't lying. It wasn't a lie, just you forgot it. Okay. You forgot. Miss Mailer very often comes to deliveries during the night. I did see her that night as well, but I didn't think much of it, as it's nothing unusual. I had no reason to hide that from you. Please forgive me for the confusion. Hmm. Well, that kind of thing can happen. Human memory is in no way perfect. Uh, I don't imagine there's a problem here, is there? On the contrary, Your Honor. There's one more thing Miss Squirrel forgot to mention. Uh, what is it? I like to recall that Miss Mailer said about having met Miss Grey Earl that night. I got something in my eye. Uh, uh she has a quarter carrying a tray. Okay. Well, Miss Grey Earl, apparently you were carrying a tray at that time. What did you have to say about that? Jean Grey Earl, I believe you should add that to your testimony. As you wish, my lord. It's unlikely she really forgot about it. If I actually tried to hide it, must mean something. So, she said Miss Mailer left just as I was bringing Master his usual drink. Okay, let's learn more about that. Hold it! What do you mean by usual drink? Come on now, there you go. But Master's experiments, Master's experiments continued to late hours, he would always have some juice to ward off sleepiness. What kind of juice was it? Tomato juice. Oh, somebody said something. What was that? A mirror. Hang on. Excuse me, Mister. Look, oh my God. Okay, Mister. Whoa! I I know nothing about it. Nothing. Nothing at all. Oh my God. Uh. <laughs> Witness. What have you done this time? Don't don't give me that scary look, Gwizzard Barnum. I, I I it was only just a little bit. Seriously, hardly anything at all. Um, what are you talking about? How? What do you think I'm talking about? The, 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 the juice, the tomato juice, of course. The, the tomato juice. Oh, you didn't. Surely even you wouldn't. Well, like I told you before, I think I sort of overdid it a bit the previous night. When I woke up, me head was pounding, so I went to see the alchemist. But you know what happened, and when I was left alone in the alchemist's study, it kind of caught me eye. The bottle, I mean. The tomato juice. And I thought it might make the headache go away, you know? So you... you drank it. The juice found the crime scene. Well, why shouldn't I? It's a drink, ain't it? What else do you have a drink? You drink it, right? 
And you can can you tell us where that bottle is now? Come to think of it, I don't remember seeing it at the crime scene. It has been confiscated. Confiscated? As I mentioned previously, the occult crime analyst confiscated all of Master's personal belongings from the crime scene. Is that so? I believe we should take note of that bottle and add it to the court record. Tomato juice! Brought to Belduk before his death, Amir drank some of the juice be the following day. Okay. Yeah, so there I was, having a bit of juice, when a girl came round. Ugh. To tell you the truth, I don't quite remember what happened after that. And that's when he passed out, huh? Of course. I went there again the next morning. As promised, Sir Beltsu probably was... Well, 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 he looked... Okay. Then the guy went out... Uh, Wait, then that guy went out like a light on the couch. I got a little scared, so I left as soon as I found the letter. And that would be... Um... Well, that'll be a mirror, right? So let's press on that. Hold it! He went out like a light? He was helping me look for the letter. And then it happened. Out of the blue, he just passed out. The rascal. He collapsed, and his eyes rolled back. He wouldn't move. What the hell? That sounds... What? It almost sounds like he died. Um, no such luck, unfortunately. That horrible sound, he was grating his teeth. I thought my ears would explode. Hmm, I, I, yep, not sure what came over me. Nothing that happened to me before, sleeping like that. You know, I, di I didn't just fall asleep. More like I sort of blacked out, I guess. No idea why. Oh, you guys, what do you think? Any ideas? I think it bears no resemblance or relevance. And there, were, and there you have my honest answer. And I think it's good I wasn't there. Oh crap, never mind. But the question is, why did he black out like that? Well... Oh! Oh, okay. Well, hold on, we'll go back to the core record. We, we know that the major spot was, it was brought to Belduke before his death because and Amir drank some drank some of the juice the following day. And Guerrero mentioned that he would, the uh, Belduke would drink tomato juice, like whenever he's feeling a little restless or whatever. Maybe it was laced with something. So uh, I got, I got evidence. Your Honor, I might have a clue as to why this witness suddenly lost consciousness. You do. Really? Do you work out, Bluey? If that's the case, may the defense present some evidence. Which piece of evidence shows why this man fell unconscious? And that would be tomato juice. Take that! Mister, I believe that the reason you might have lost consciousness at the crime scene is tied to a certain piece of evidence. But wasn't it just because, you know, I had a bit too much fun the night before? No, it was because of this. The tomato juice. You passed out right after drinking this juice. Therefore, it's not unreasonable to assume that there's a direct connection between the two. The tomato juice does not make people fall unconscious, Sir Blue Knight. Exactly. That's why something must have been added to the contents of that bottle. Something like a... Sort what? Soporific. Oh, it's kind of like Soporil. VLR. The Sopor... Soporific. Okay. <gasps> you mean... Sleep medicine. And if a, a Soporific... A soporific... Soporific was mixed in with the tomato juice. That means Sir Belton must have... Or would have been unconscious at the time he was assailed. Meaning, also, why he didn't put up a fight if he was strangled. Oh, oh, oh! This sketch, we're having a look. The red liquid trickling down from the victim's mouth. This proof that Sir Beltic must have drank the tomato juice. And that's like I said, too, I, I was questioning it. It's like, you said blood most likely. We didn't know it was really blood. I, I, I failed to consider this. Inquisitor Bardum, I bet you remember saying this to the court. Can you imagine anyone just sitting back and letting themselves be strangled? Clearly, there should be no evidence of a struggle. There should be evidence of a struggle. And since we haven't found any, that must mean the killer erased all traces of a fight from the crime scene. 
However, if the victim was unconscious when his assailant was strangling him, then the killer could have committed a crime through a small portal big enough to put their arms through after all. Objection. That may be so, but tell me this. How would a culprit have managed to obtain such a strong soporific? Ugh! It was very simple. I think you realize why. From the alchemist. That's right. An alchemist would no doubt have a wide, ar wide array of various medicate, um, medicaments uh, in their possession. And an apprentice would have little trouble stealing some of them from their study. Isn't that right, Miss Grey Earl? See, now I don't, I don't feel right blaming her. Now I feel like something else is going on here. How... How should I respond to that? I'm sorry disappointment may perhaps be the best way to put it. What do you mean? Even though that juice bottle has been st safely stored for the past three months, I I'm positive it would be impossible to find any traces of so perfect now. Oh. You... You wicked. Well, this is unbelievable. Was it really the butler who did it? But everything she says holds true. Yeah, probably, but uh, we'll see. All right, where was I? I had to call there. Uh, I mean, I don't think I said this. But everything she says holds true. She was pretending to be a boy. That's mighty suspicious to start with. Is she a witch? Oh, <laughs> uh, my ears, tinnitus. <laughs> Everybody has it now, great. Hold on, everyone! The butler couldn't have done that to Sir Balduke. He... she would never, ever do it! Hmm? Please, let us testify just one more time. Uh, Miss Grey Earl, let's tell them. Let's prove they're wrong. They have no idea how much you've done for Sir Balduke. Miss Mailer? Very well, I shall grant your request. Testify about the relationship between Miss Grey Earl and Sir Balduke. Okay, let's see what they had to... Oh, crap. Did, come on. Sorry, I got another email. It's like, uh, not now. Okay. <clears throat> so let's hear about the alchemist and the butler. The master took me in, a complete stranger. I will forever be indebted to him. That's why I could never make an attempt on his life, th through magic or otherwise. Sir Baldwin was a wonderful man. He's the one who could recommend this line of work to me. And he's the one who told me about it. The confidentiality obligation, I mean. I've never once broken it. It's true that Sir Balduk would vo evoke fear due to him being an alchemist. However, he was also a man of admirable character who supported Tom Silk through their, his research. Why would anyone want to kill such a man? This question keeps haunting me, however much I think about it. Witches need no reason behind their evil. That is that is what makes them witches. Aww. Now the defense may begin its interrogation. Okay, um... Once again, I don't see anything I can present. However, I'll press. So, why did... Okay, why take you in? How long has it been since you began serving Sir Balduke? I suppose it would have been five years now. Before that, I'd lost everything. I had nothing and nobody left in the world. You lost everything? And that's when Master Beltuk helped me. He kindly took me in and gave me work. What did she go through before she started working for Beltuk? Later, when I was helping Master with his research, he even taught me how to read and write. I was able to live comfortably for so long all because of Master. I don't know much about Grey Earl. She doesn't seem the type to kill someone who, who, that she owes so much to. Everyone in this town knows how you serve Sir Belduke. Now you may continue your testimony. And you can never make an attempt on his life. Keep pressing, I don't know. You're claiming you had no reason to kill Sir Belduke. Yeah, uh, phone, no, phone, phone, phone. No. Bad. Yes! Uh, oh my god. 
The thing is, I, I could take off the, vibra the, vi the vibration. However, I'm afraid that I'm gonna miss a call or something because uh, my eyes won't be looking at the um, phone. So, regardless. Yes, you can ask whoever you wish, but I'm sure they'll say the same. That is so. As well as well known as Jean Greyro was devoted to serving Sir Belduc. It's difficult to imagine that she could brutally murder her respected master. Indeed, I, I am of the same opinion. I have visited Sir Belduc on several occasions to inquire about this piece of evidence or that. And I must say I felt there was a strong bond of trust between him and Miss Greyro. Do you still think you can come up with a motive? A motive? Jean Greyro's motive for murder. Oh, man. Greyro risked a lot of conjure, conjure up a small portal in the wall. And then she killed Belduke. But what motive does she have? <laughs> um... Suggest a motive for murder, select another motive. Yeah, not murder! I, I wouldn't say mur murder, but I, I, I'm not... It just seems a little weird that she didn't do anything, so I'm gonna say maybe another motive. I understand. The defense will present evidence. Evidence to indict Jean Grail's motive, murder for motive for murder? No. Wait, what? What's this about, Sir Blue Knight? Sir Belduc's life was taken that day. That's a fact. However, was this actually the culprit's true objective? Objection. What? This is nonsense! Sir Belduc was murdered! What other possible reason could there be besides that someone wanting him dead? I'm fairly positive this piece of evidence will lead us to the culprit's real motive. Very well. Defense, present evidence to indicate Jean Greyro's motive for committing the crime. Um... This is my little iffy on. Base outline, and a painting, floor plan. I'm, not, I'm a little unsure about this. You know, screw it. I'll use the hint coin. I don't care. Here's my hint coin. Oh. <laughs> well, for whatever reason, I thought it was between these two. Like, I'll say maybe she did put something in there. But... The letter... Maybe there's just something in it that... Wasn't good for... Grey Earl, maybe. I guess this is it. Take that! Miss Grey Earl had no reason for wanting to kill Sir Belduc. However, there was another incident that night which is related to his case. And I have an idea what it was. Another incident. I'm referring to this letter. Sir Belton wrote a letter shortly after, before his death. Yet all we have here are some blank sheets of parchment. Fascinating. Is it, are you saying maybe a witch used some kind of incriminating magic on that letter, Mr. Wright? Uh, maybe. No, the spell used on by the witch was, of course, Godor. Hmm. Let's go over to the state of the crime scene one one more time. As we know from Miss Mailer's testimony, in the letter was a letterbox next to the victim's head. Ah uh, yes, it's in the sketch as well. The letterbox is on the far side of the shelf. Point of note is the location of that letterbox. It, unbelievable! As Inquisitor Bardem seems to have noticed, the letterbox is within reach of a small portal conjured, conjured by the witch behind a painting on the wall. Oh, indeed it is! And as Sir Beldig's butler, 
you would have known exactly where he keeps his letters. Oh boy. Indeed, Master Belduk would have always kept kept his letters in that letter box before posting them. You you mentioned no such thing. Miss mm. Gray Earl, you create a portal of Godor. Not not with the intention of killing Sir Belduk. You were after this letter, weren't you? That's merely wild conjecture. I didn't even know about that letter at the time. You didn't? Now that's very strange. <laughs> when Miss Mailer came by that night, Sir Belton was busy writing that letter. And that's when you entered, carrying a bottle of tomato juice. Oh! There's no way you would have known that your master was writing a letter to someone. You could you could have known even more than that. For instance, perhaps you knew that he was writing well what he was writing about. That's enough. I served Master Balduke as his butler. I would never have pried it into his private affairs. Whatever it was he wrote about in his final letter to the storyteller, it is no concern of mine. Oh, why did you just mention a storyteller though? Your Honor. Yes, defense. I like Miss Grey Earl's last testament last the last statement to be added to her testimony. Hmm. Any objections, Inquisitor Bottom? No, my lord. I think he knows too. Very well. Witness, include what you just told us in your testimony. As you wish, my lord. I had no reason to take his life nor steal his letter to the storyteller. If you knew nothing about all that... Why... Oh why... Do you know it was written to the storyteller? Now wait, no time on that. Ugh. I kind of had a phone call too, and I'm not sure. I think I'm like around 20 something minutes. I'll, I'll go ahead and just try a little longer. Hold it! Let me get this straight. You didn't know anything about the victim's letter. That's right. I believe I said as much already. Then, how did you know? How did you know it was addressed to the storyteller? Oh, uh, indeed! Oh boy. Why don't you answer his question, witness? It's true this letter is addressed to the storyteller. But when did you find out about it? I have spoken about the murder with many people over the past three months. Oh, who said who did that? Oh, Mailer. Hang on! Excuse me, Miss Mailer. Hmm? Oh! Ugh. I thought I caught her off guard, but it's her screenshot caught me off guard. Is there perhaps anything you'd like to add to Miss Grey Earl's testimony? Um, no, not really. In that case, let me ask you a different question. Did you tell Miss Grey Earl about Sir Belduk's letter? I don't know. Do not beat about the bush witness! Answer the question! If I may briefly interrupt... Hmm. I am testifying right now. If you wish to question Miss Mailer, please do so once you finish interrogating me. She's not going to let me question Mailer, from the looks of it. She's so keen to prevent her from answering. This might just be a critical point in her testimony. i got to find another way of fin fishing out for that information. Witnesses, continue testifying. Okay, so I'll go back to the statement. Hold it. And this time I won't question... Mailer, because apparently she won't let us do so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, now. Okay, now we'll continue on here. Everyone has been so kind to me. They also have told me all sorts of things. I must have heard about it from someone at some point. 
Hmm. Well, the incident was certainly much talked about already. Would you not agree, Defense? Does her testimony hold together? Nah, I think there's a problem with it. There is a huge contradiction in Miss Grayrell's testimony. <gasps> you are becoming very predictable, Sir Blue Knight. If there is a contra uh, contradiction, I hope you have no evidence to prove it. Here's my chance. There's only one way to expose her contradiction. Um. Uh oh. Wait a minute. Um. Oh shoot! I don't even know if I have anything. I don't I don't I can't use a hint coin here. I don't think I no, I don't think I can. Um hmm. There's only one way to expose a contradiction. Oh, I can use a hint. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I can't present evidence. Um but you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh... Ugh. Actually, can I stop this episode right now? I don't even know if I can. Alright, well... Regardless, we know the answer is I can't present evidence, right? So... I'm gonna stop... I'll, I'll, I'll do this. And defense has no intention on presenting evidence. No, I want to stop the episode. I thought there was a button. Okay, you know what? I'll continue. I'll fine. I'll go on a little bit longer until I have time to stop it. Ugh, whatever. Defense has no intention of presenting evidence. What? The proof that there was a contradiction cannot be found in a court record. What? What is the meaning of this, sir, Mr. Wright? The professor pointed out to me in the previous witch trial. In this court, an attorney's arsenal isn't limited to the court record. Each of the witnesses in this trial has given their own account of what occurred. Therefore, whenever one witness has testified, the other remaining witnesses have listened. And Miss Layton. Should one witness's testimony differ from another's testimony, then? I suppose that in itself can be considered a contradiction, can it not? Just opposing contradictory testimonies from different witnesses is the key. Miss Grey Earl? Hmm? Your testimony contradicts another one that we've heard in this court today. Ugh. And I had no reason to take the life, nor steal. Can I still not... I don't think I... I gotta end the episode here. Things like the thing, I, I gotta stop recording, period. And I can't, I don't know, I don't know when I, I can save. Uh, I'll just keep going until I can stop. All I can do. So I had no reason to take his life nor steal it from his, wait. Wait, wait, I had no reason to steal, take his life nor steal his letter to the storyteller. Wait, wait. Master took me a complete stranger. A wonderful man who's the one who recommended this line of work for me. Hmm. Maybe the saying she's never once broken a confidentiality, I think maybe she did. Objection! That. that that's just a, a little adorable. I mean, just him <laughs> moving latent like that. Oh, Luke. It was a single word I gave you away, Miss Grey Earl. What? What do you mean by that? The name of the recipient. There was only a few people who knew the in intended recipient of that letter. 
four people to be precise. Uh, only four people? Oh, oh, you know what? I have a menu button now. Now I can stop. Okay. So, okay. Sorry, guys. I, I, I know this is probably a weird, weird place to stop the episode, but, um... I, I have to stop recording for, for today. I'm just... I have some stuff I gotta do, and... Frankly, my voice is getting a little like... Bleh. So, um... I don't, I don't even know if I'm, I'm getting close here. I mean, maybe I am, but... How many episodes did I record today? Three? And I usually... I, 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 can, I get, like, these court things done in each half by, like, four or five or so episodes, depending on everything. If, that, if that's a pattern. Um... Regardless, I'm maybe in the next episode we'll actually finish up Case 4 and solve everything. We'll see you guys. So, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Let's Play Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. See you guys later.